In this lecture, I will present the last of the series of uh, controller uh, designing the joint space and aim at tracking a reference trajectory. Uh, in particular, we will uh, consider uh, the case of adaptation. We will provide the motivation for um, the need of uh, adaptation. Uh, we will introduce uh, some idea that have been around in the research literature for a while until finding the most standard and by now classical adaptive, direct adaptive controller for, uh, that achieves global uh, asymptotic track. So the um, need for, for adaptation comes from essentially two aspects. Uh, there could be a, a very large uncertainty uh, on the knowledge of the actual value of the dynamic parameters and therefore dynamic coefficient of the robot, uh, or even if we have a, a performed a, a, an offline accurate identification, uh, there could be a poor knowledge of the payload that uh, the robot is being uh, uh, is holding during some uh, part of the task. Uh, we will uh, see that uh, in, in the absence of any a priori estimate of uh, the value of these dynamic parameters, um, we are able to design a, a dynamic controller, so a controller that includes uh, an internal state uh, evolution um, that achieves uh, asymptotic trajectory tracking. So it's able to bring to zero the uh, trajectory error starting uh, from any initial value of this uh, dynamic coefficient. In fact, this is called direct adaptive control because there's uh, no actual need to uh, be able to estimate during uh, the transient behavior the true values of this dynamic coefficient. Uh, in fact, there are other classes of uh, adaptive controller, which are called indirect, which include online estimation of these parameters. And of course, in that case, you obtain some better results, but you require to have convergence of the estimation in order to have convergence of the tracking control, while direct adaptive control directly aim at reducing to zero the state trajectory error. The main tool that we will use uh, is the uh, existence of a linear parametrization of the robot dynamics. We have already discussed this topic, so we will uh, look back at this problem and see how this can be used in order to design a control. And as I said, the final uh, adaptive controller will be one of the nonlinear dynamic type. So, uh, to make uh, to give some background, uh, let's make a summary of the nature of robot parameters. There are uh, parameters that we assume to be known at this stage, and typically all the uh, kinematic ones that appear in, uh, in the Denali Kartenberg uh, table of parameters. Uh, if these are not perfectly known, we know that we can achieve a kinematic calibration in which the dynamic issues are play no role. Then there are a number of uncertain par parameters that can be identified, at least in combination, in group, uh, offline, so by um, experiment uh, perform, perform on, on a trajectory that explore the whole workspace of the robot and are sufficiently exciting all the dynamic coefficients. And uh, these uh, parameters, or coefficient if you wish, uh, the parameters are 10 for each link, so the masses, position of the center of mass, and the inertia symmetric, 3 by 3 inertia matrix of each link. You may include also parameters related to the motors, um, but in any event, uh, this number of very large uh, number of parameters uh, are com appear combined uh, in what we have called dynamic coefficient, and this number, P, is typically uh, much less than 
the total number of uh, dynamic parameters. There are also other parameters that we included in the uh, uh, identification, but which are typically slowly varying as opposed to the constant value before during the operation. And these are all um, those that relate to uh, dissipated effect like viscous friction, dry friction, and, and, and other types of friction. And you may include this into the model or leave this as disturbances. Indeed, when we will uh, see the um, adaptive controller, uh, we need still to make uh, a modeling effort. So, in case to model also this event if you want to uh, achieve um, accurate tracking asymptotically. Uh, finally, there are also uh, unknown or uh, parameters that change abruptly. Typically, these are the, uh, the parameters of the, uh, related to the payload, because when you pick the payload, uh, there's a change of uh, um, a number of parameters related to the last link, and this uh, change affects, as we have seen, most part of the robot dynamics through the combination of dynamic coefficients. In this case, uh, this um, instantaneous variation uh, will induce some uh, error in executing the traje trajectory and uh, the adaptive control from there on will try to uh, catch up and recover the error uh, along the trajectory to, to be zero. So the goal in general uh, is that we could start even without any a priori or offline identification. We assume to have a sufficiently smooth trajectory as uh, is often the case. Uh, we assume that also the acceleration, the desired acceleration uh, exists. It may be discontinuous or not, but it exists uh, as, a, um, as a signal. Um, the, uh, this trajectory may again come from some kinematic inversion uh, and joint interpolation of uh, a given trajectory in the Cartesian space, but since we are building the error in the joint space, uh, this adaptive controller is classified among the uh, joint space uh, control law. In fact, it is the last one that we will see in this course. Uh, so under large dynamic uncertainty, we would like that the trajectory uh, error goes to zero, which means in terms of the state of the system, that both the position error and the uh, position and the velocity error would converge to zero, uh, obtaining uh, global stability. Actually, uh, we have a, a we make a, a slight distinction here so that we talk about global stability and asymptotic stability of the error because uh, we don't impose uh, any uh, convergence of the estimates that we are using within the adaptive control uh, of the dynamic coefficient. So in this sense, uh, the error in estimation will not converge to zero, but it will remain bounded. So we have global stability and asymptotic uh, stability of the tracking error. <coughs> As I said, identification is not uh, of particular concern, uh, and uh, even when the tracking error has been reduced to zero, we can still have in the control law some numerical value of the dynamic coefficient will have nothing to do with the real one. Uh, instead, if we would like that also uh, the dynamic coefficient converge to their uh, correct value, then we should uh, resort to more complex indirect adaptive schemes. We will see there are situations under which uh, even with direct adaptation, uh, the estimate uh, will converge to the desired, uh, to the real, to the real values. Uh, so we will use uh, as a tool the linear parametrization. Uh, for completeness, I have added one smooth uh, dissipative term in the model, uh, fv of q dots. You can add farther if you wish, or you can avoid to put them in. 
uh, if you think that uh, these dissipative uh, terms are not so relevant. And we know that we can always find a vector, a uh, p-dimensional vector uh, of dynamic coefficients such that the dynamic model takes the linear form in these parameters with a regressor matrix y and a uh, coefficient vector a. Uh, the vector contains the unknown or uncertain coefficients uh, this, as we know, uh, are a combination of the physical parameter of the robot, and not all parameters will, uh, uh, will be present in general. While the regression matrix uh, has uh, uh, three arguments, so dependent on, on three types of arguments, it depends linearly on the acceleration of the robot, quadratically on the joint velocities, uh, if there are no um, discs term, in fact, uh, if there are uh, viscous terms, there will be also a linear dependence on Q, but the one that the terms that are coming from kinetic energy depend quadratically on Q dot, and finally, uh, depend in non-linear non fashion, typically trigonometrically, on the configuration Q. So, uh, in order to make a, a trajectory controller that is adaptive, one typically starts from a non-adaptive one. And, uh, sorry, I have to quit this. And uh, so, and then try to modify, uh, to use uh, estimates and then to update this estimate in such a way that the trajectory error goes to zero. So we may start considering uh, the most simple uh, trajectory controller uh, where we use a hat in terms of having estimate only of the true parameters. So there's a feedforward term, uh, which is the inverse dynamics, plus a PD control. Now, if we start with such a controller and we realize that we are still not striking accurately the uh, desired trajectory, we may wish to update the parameters contained uh, or the dynamic coefficient contained in the various dynamic term. Or we may start with a uh, control based on feedback linearization, uh, which is a nonlinear controller uh, where the PD term is uh, modulated by the uh, act of robot inertia. Again, here we are using estimate. And uh, if we realize that things are not going well because our estimates are very poor, then we, would like, we may wish to update this type of uh, uh, controller, so updating the uh, parameters uh, contained in the M hat, S hat, G hat, and of course uh, F hat uh, terms. So when we uh, group, uh, when we put a, he a head on top of these uh, dynamic terms, in fact, uh, we imply that this is the result of having some estimated value for the dynamic coefficient A, which we uh, label with a head as well. Now, uh, while trying to make this uh, controller adaptive, uh, well, I, I must say that this uh, has been done, but it's quite critical and it requires some restrictive assumption. For instance, uh, in the feedback linearization uh, control law, since we are updating the, uh, the parameters uh, ins inside the various dynamic terms, uh, there could be some instability generated by the fact that uh, for some temporary uh, interval of time, so some transient, we may use non-positive actual gains. So KP and KD are chosen positive definite here, but since they are modulated by the estimated inertia matrix, and this estimated matrix may not necessarily be uh, positive definite. It may become singular. Uh, you could uh, estimate uh, negative values of masses during some transient, and of course this will destroy the convergence. So if you're trying to render adaptive the feedback linearization controller, then you have to make sure that your estimate remain confined in some, some physically relevant interval, and this complicates things. Um, similarly, if you try to um, make uh, adaptive 
the uh, feed forward plus PD linear controller. Uh, this can be done, but requires a, a complex analysis uh, on the bounds of the PD part, which is in fact the only part that uh, needs to be designed properly. Uh, in general, uh, in particular the feedback analyzation scheme may require some estimates of the acceleration, which is again a source of noise and of, uh, uh, let's say, um, tracking error. So, uh, um, people have tried to uh, work with other, with other control law. For instance, the one that we have seen uh, sharing uh, global asymptotic tracking characteristic which is made uh, by replacing in some special parts of the control law the desired value rather than the actual value. Uh, we have seen that this controller does not require cancellation of nonlinear term, in fact leaves in the control loop uh, again nonlinear dynamics and coupled but has global uh, asymptotic stabilization properties. Now, this is again uh, this structure of the control law when we um, emphasize the fact that we are using estimate for the dynamic coefficient, so we put a hat on all dynamic scale. Uh, so the first attempt in making an adaptive version, like in all other uh, cases, would be to give a law of uh, variation of the estimate a hat. So a time law, a variation over time in continuous time of uh, the estimate a hat to be used within this type of uh, um, control. Now it, it can be shown that if we don't impose further uh, assumption, in particular very complex uh, inequalities on the choice of the game, depending on some bounds on the each of the individual uh, term uh, in the dynamic model of the robot, then uh, a straight application of this type of uh, control law would uh, be able to bring to zero the velocity error. So at some point, we move the robot joint at the same speed of the desired trajectory, but there will be some permanent residual position error typically left. So this observation uh, is one possible motivation for slightly modifying this control law, uh, which even in the non-adaptive case has global trajectory tracking characteristic, uh, if the parameters are correct indeed, uh, which is the following. So we modify the desired velocity and we introduce the concept of a reference velocity in this, uh, in this context, uh, namely uh, by adding the position error multiplied by a typically diagonal and positive definite matrix lambda. So you see that instead of uh, wherever you find a Q dot desired or Q double dot desired, uh, you replace uh, a q dot r or a q double dot r which can be computed, computed by differentiation of this formula. And the idea of this modification uh, can be illustrated on a simple example, but in fact uh, has some profound uh, motivation which is, uh, which is related to the uh, Explo exploitation of the passivity property of the robot system when you see torque as input and velocities as output. So the interpretation of this reference velocity in the elementary case is rather simple. So suppose that you have a, a mass, a controlled mass, uh, that moves on a linear rail. And uh, this mass should follow some uh, reference trajectory Q desired of uh, time. Now suppose that uh, you represent the desired motion uh, as a mobile reference in green, uh, and at some point uh, of time you have a position error which is positive. So the reference is ahead of this one-dimensional uh, motion with respect to the controlled mass, which should superpose, in fact, to the mobile reference. 
So in order to recover this error with the control that you uh, may design here, the idea is the following. So you uh, temporarily assign, instead of the desired velocity Q dot desired, the reference velocity, which in this case will be larger than Q dot desired because the error is positive, lambda is positive. So uh, the controlled mass will see a higher speed to be tracked. Since it is able to track uh, the desired speed, but not the, directly the desired uh, position, uh, this increment will accelerate the control of mass, so has to recover the position error. In fact, we can introduce a, so an enhanced velocity error, uh, which is the difference between the velocity of the control of mass uh, with respect to the reference velocity, and this is, in this case, larger than the velocity error with the original desired value, and then apply a controller, which in this case is simply uh, a positive gain, kd, times this velocity error. I'm using a, a label d because, in fact, uh, s has the dimension of a velocity. So this is kd times q dot r minus q dot, and if we replace uh, the uh, definition of qr dot, uh, we have that uh, kd is multiplying q, de uh, q desired dot plus lambda the position error minus q dot. So we have obtained, in fact, a PD controller, you know, but just um, reacting in a proportional way to this enhanced velocity error. And with the PD controller, of course, the, the mass will follow the um, uh, reference. <coughs> so the Proportional uh, gain is, in fact, uh, the result of the product of the original KD with this uh, lambda, which uh, enhances the desired velocity into the reference one. And the same happens, of course, uh, in case of um, a mass which is leading in front of its mobile reference. So the error is negative, so the mass is going too fast, so we can modify accordingly the desired velocity into the reference velocity with uh, adding lambda times e, but e in this case is negative, so uh, the reference velocity will be smaller than the desired velocity, so the reference is uh, uh, slowing down in a sense, so that the mass will slow down, and by doing so we recover also the extra position error. Uh, so the reduced error will be s, and again uh, with s smaller than e dot. Okay, um, with this in mind, uh, we consider the following adaptive control. So we will see the design and we will give a proof of uh, what are the closed loop characteristics under this control law. So we substitute uh, to the previous controller wherever we find uh, QD dot and QD double dot the uh, reference uh, associated quantities. Uh, and the whole expression, and then we leave the PD controller, which is there for stabilizing no matter which is the estimate that uh, you are uh, using. So the PD part will always have positive definite matrices, in particular diagonal one, while all the rest of the model, uh, based on the uh, linear parameterization of the model itself, this control law, in fact, can be written as the regressor matrix times the estimates of the dynamic coefficient, where the regressor matrix now has four arguments as input, because, as I, uh, as I already uh, explained, uh, the dependence on Q and Q dot, but also on Q dot R, which appears, for instance, in the Coriolis and centrifugal terms in the factorization part, and also in uh, the viscous term in place of Q dot desired. So, uh, this is the control law, and without adaptation, this control law it can be shown with the Lyapunov argument, and again, Barbara Lemma and then Lasalle, 
that uh, you get uh, convergence of the trajectory tracking error to zero, asymptotically and globally, if the estimates are good one. But here we are working uh, in case of a need of adaptation, so the estimation are quite poor. So we need to update uh, the estimate A hat that we are using within the dynamic terms. Uh, updating means writing a differential equation which describes how A hat changes over time. Uh, and this structure is a general structure, it could be other way of adaptation, but this is very convenient. And you see that what is driving adaptation is the fact that you have uh, a modified velocity error, so that you have um, uh, an error between the velocity and the reference velocity, which includes also the position error, if any. And uh, there's a gain, diagonal gain matrix, which uh, affects the rapidity in which you're modifying uh, your estimate, depending on the modified velocity error. And in between, there's a, a matrix, which is the regressor transpose, in fact, remember that the regressor has n columns, sorry, n rows, n p columns, if p is the number of dynamic coefficients. Since we are updating the p coefficients, the y transpose works in the proper dimension. So the y transpose has p rows and n columns, where n is the number of joints. And in fact, the modified velocity error has the same dimension of the joint space. So this is a, a, a famous uh, adaptive controller of Zolotin and Lee, and we, gave, we give now a slight modified uh, proof of uh, asymptotic stabilization and convergence of the trajectory error to zero. So the theorem says that this uh, adaptive controller, in fact, uh, makes the tracking error globally asymptotically stable. So it will converge to zero while time goes by. And uh, there are no specific information. Let's move back for a moment. Uh, indeed, uh, in the update law, uh, this is a, a dynamic uh, state for the controller. Uh, in fact, the number of state of the controller is exactly the number of dynamic coefficients in the model. And this is why when doing uh, uh, linear parameterization, we try to reduce the number p of dynamic coefficient because this will imply that we have a, a more or less state in an adaptive controller, for instance. So this is another reason why uh, we tend to find a minimal parameterization. Uh, and this um, update law, of course this is a dynamic system, it needs some initialization at time zero, so the a hat zero is the initial estimate that we're using. Now, okay, so this is uh, the theorem. Let's look uh, at the proof. Uh, the proof uh, goes through uh, the definition of uh, a new Lyapunov candidate for the closed loop system. And uh, remember that now the closed loop system is made by the robot and the controller, but the controller has its own state as well as the robot, so we should define a Lyapunov candidate which is defined on the whole set of states of the closed loop system, so the robot state, Q and Q dot, for instance, and the dynamic controller state, which are the A hat, so the estimate of the dynamic coefficient. And this function is a good candidate because it's defined with a kinetic energy light term now we are using the uh, modified velocity error in the quadratic form with the inertia matrix, so we have one half S transpose M of Q S. Then we have a, a quadratic term in the position error with a positive definite matrix that is uh, not yet specified at this stage, it will be specified during the course of the proof. And then we have again a quadratic term, positive definite, in the error in the parameter estimation. So a, hat, a tilde is the difference between A, which is assumed to be constant and unknown, and A hat, which is the estimate that we are updating. So you see that uh, this uh, candidate is positive 
definite because it's uh, the quadratic term have positive definite matrices uh, and so when s e or uh, a tilde are zero these are always uh, positive and in fact it is zero only if at the same time the modified velocity error s is zero uh, and this implies that e dot plus lambda e is zero but at this stage uh, they could be zero but compensate one with the other uh, if the, in the second term the error, position error is zero uh, which implies then that also the velocity error we got is zero with the first condition and finally when we are have a good estimate so when the parametric error uh, is zero so it's zero in the, ideal condi in the desired condition but otherwise it's always positive so it's a good uh, candidate for the Lyapunov analysis and this is what we just discussed so mm, standard procedure as I uh, said before so we take this candidate and we look at the sign possible sign of its time derivative evaluated along the trajectories of the closed loop system so in the derivation from the um, kinetic like term we get uh, two contribution, one half S transpose M dot, so the differentiation, the derivative of the, uh, uh, of the inertia matrix times S, then twice uh, uh, a term which is symmetric as in the scalar, so this eliminates the factor two, which is S transpose M S dot, and then the other two terms which follows uh, standardly because the um, relative matrices in this quadratic terms are constant. Uh, we notice also that for the last term um, we have a tilde dot which is equal to minus a hat dot because the true unknown uh, parameters are supposed to be constant so a dot is equal to zero in this case. Now, uh, this term is the one that we have to uh, substitute because it's associated to the closed loop dynamics. So we have to build up this term first because it's not mq, q double dot, it's something else. It's s dot, uh, which is a, a, a pseudo acceleration in sense. So we look at the closed loop dynamics. On one side, we have the model, so mq double dot plus sq dot plus g plus f. Q, Q dot and uh, again uh, I forgot to uh, emphasize this uh, the um, factorization that we are using for the uh, velocity the quadratic velocity term uh, should be one that guarantees that m dot minus 2s is Q symmetric and so independently of uh, which is the vector uh, where this matrix appears in quadratic form. So uh, this is the, the model. The control law uh, is m uh, hat q double dot r plus s hat q dot r and then the gravity term g hat and so on plus the p law uh, taken separately. Now uh, from this close to dynamic uh, we don't see the s dot in fact so we do a, 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 a bit of a trick. So we take this expression that I'm writing, which has no hat and has the references. Remember that this is just analysis, so we can play with this equation the way we, we prefer. And we subtract uh, from this quantity uh, first the left side and then the right side, which are equal, so we obtain again an equality. So in the, on, the, on the first part, we would have, for instance, uh, m q double dot r minus m q double dot. So we generate uh, exactly the m s dot term that we are looking for. On the right hand side, when we subtract from this expression the uh, hat expression, we would have, for instance, m of q double dot r minus m hat q double dot r. Since the difference between m and m hat is just using the 
true values a, which we don't know, and the estimated value a hat, then this can be, uh, together with the other term, can be factorized properly. So the result is the following one. Uh, uh, on one side we have ms dot, and then we have also the other two terms, um, namely s times capital S times the small s, there's a bit of overloading of notation here, uh, plus the uh, viscous friction coefficient times s again, and on the other side we have all the tilde, so the difference between the actual value and the estimated value, and this in every in each and every dynamic terms. So m tilde p dot p double dot r plus s tilde p dot r g tilde f tilde and then again the PD term. Now this is going to be substituted to the time derivative of the uh, Lyapunov candidate. So this is uh, this substitution is in fact the realization of the uh, need to evaluate the derivative along the trajectory of the closed loop system and this expression is derived exactly from the closed loop dynamics that we have just written in this slide. So when you do so and you take into account that uh, wherever you're using the tilde value because of the linearity in the dynamic coefficient uh, you can uh, use the linear parameterization of uh, that terms uh, which gives exactly y times a tilde, so the error in the estimation, and then minus kde e and minus kde e is, uh, are the uh, remaining term. So, uh, now you substitute this into the uh, time derivative of the Lyapunov function. Uh, you realize that there is a one term uh, which vanishes because of the skew symmetry of the matrix m dot minus 2s, uh, and then also uh, at this point uh, you substitute the uh, expression uh, in place of a hat you substitute the expression of the update law a hat dot so gamma y transpose s the gamma sub cancel the gamma to the minus one in the term so you see that the last term uh, equals uh, because it's a scalar so it's equal to its transpose, equals an, uh, with the opposite sign another term in the, uh, in the derivative of the Lyapunov function. This cancellation is very important because otherwise we would not know the sign uh, of these quantities. Rather, uh, with this simplification, we end up with uh, a mixed form where S, E and E dot appear other than that, there are only uh, positive definite constant matrices. So, uh, in order to make things clearer, we uh, add, um, we replace S with uh, its definition, so E dot plus lambda E, and because F E is uh, diagonal, we can also uh, rewrite things uh, in the following way. And if we write things in the following way, we realize that uh, this time derivative of uh, the candidate Lyapunov function uh, is fully quadratic and it contains uh, a complete quadratic form in the position error and in the velocity error E dot, including mixed terms. And of course, while uh, the quadratic term in E and in E dot have a definite negative sign, uh, the other one has a combination of terms and this is why uh, we introduce the choice of the positive definite matrix R and this is chosen exactly to cancel out uh, these quantities. So if we choose uh, the lambda as kd to the minus 1 kp which is exactly the same, uh, the generalization of the same uh, idea that uh, we introduce it in the modified velocity reference and we choose R in the following way and this is again certainly a positive definite matrix because KB is positive, KB to the minus 1 is positive and FB is positive or 0 in case FB is 0 then we have only 
two kp as uh, as uh, our matrix so things simplifies considerably so this is the correct choice and uh, we end up in fact with cancelling the mixed term and uh, we have a v dot which is less or equal to zero and in fact it is zero if and only if the position error is zero the velocity error is zero but it could be zero also when no matter what is the value of the estimated uh, dynamic coefficient a hat so this could be uh, equal to the true one or not in any case uh, if we apply uh, Barbara Lema and then Lassalle theorem you can only prove that the largest uh, invariant set con contained in the set of uh, state with zero the derivative of the Lyapunov function is given by the zero state trajectory case and no information about the estimate a hat however uh, since when e and e dot are zero also the modified velocity error s is zero and since s is the one that the term that updates through the transpose of the uh, regressor matrix y the estimation so if s is zero the estimation do not change any longer so you can conclude that the set of state of convergence have uh, zero trajectory error so position and velocity and a constant value for a hat Indeed, this constant value may not be the true one, so we would have an A tilde different from zero left. And this is not required, in fact, for uh, having a trajectory con convergence. So let uh, do some uh, remarks on, on, this, uh, uh, on this control law. Um, first of all, uh, we can uh, um, prove uh, it has been proved, in fact, that if the trajectory is persistently exciting, so if the reference trajectory, the desired one, actually, uh, and by persistently exciting, we um, let's say roughly mean that uh, we are uh, exciting the process of estimation and exploring the whole uh, workspace and the whole dynamic terms of the of the robot, then we will have also as a side product the convergence of the dynamic coefficients to their true values. Now, how do we check that our desired trajectory is persistently exciting? Now, this is a concept in adaptive control. If we had a linear system, uh, then uh, this would be equivalent of saying that the, the reference trajectory should have a number of independent frequency components, which is at least the double of the number of unknown coefficients that we are updating. So, for instance, if we have a linear system with three unknown parameters that we are updating with our uh, uh, adaptive control law, then they will converge in this direct adaptation scheme, uh, certainly if the reference trajectory had at least six uh, frequency components which means it's a combination, for instance, of six sinusoids uh, of different frequency. Now, this is true for linear system only. For nonlinear system, there's some uh, more complex uh, integral condition. So the integral of the quantities uh, that um, evolve over time so under the action of the uh, adaptive controller should be lower bounded at any instant. So it should be permanently lower bounded. And this is a condition that you can only check a posteriori. So you have done your uh, adaptation and now you converge to zero trajectory error. Uh, if you store all the data and evaluate this integral over time and you realize that this is always lower bounded, so above zero uh, at all times, then you know that the current estimates are the true ones. So it's a kind of a long project, uh, process, sorry, uh, that allows you to say that you have uh, estimated the correct um, dynamic coefficient, so the true ones. Now, nothing is wrong with working with uh, um, wrong estimate 
provided that you have reached convergence. Uh, however, if the estimates are not the correct one and you stop the current trajectory and you move to a new trajectory, then what typically happens if the estimates were the wrong one, in the new trajectory you will have a new transient error before bringing back the uh, tracking error on the new trajectory to zero. And of course, every time you change trajectory, if the estimate that you're using are not the true one, you will have the same problem over and over. So you guarantee that you asymptotically converge to the zero trajectory error, but every time you will have some transient error. Only if the estimate have converged to the true ones, then if you change trajectory, uh, you will uh, start, and you, you have matched initial condition, uh, you will continue to have zero error. So in a sense, uh, the fact that there are non-true dynamic coefficients that works fine so that uh, do not uh, destroy the convergence of the tra trajectory error to zero means that there is some null space in the, uh, in the regressor matrix uh, so that different value of uh, coefficient works fine for a given trajectory. Of course, those that work fine for a given trajectory may not work for a new one, unless they are the true one that works for any trajectory. Um, of course, uh, the same analysis that we have done before could be performed uh, in, in the absence of a viscous friction term, uh, and indeed this would simplify also the proof uh, in the final part. Uh, this uh, Slotin and Lee uh, adaptive controller uh, is in fact has become the standard because uh, it avoids a number of limitations that the earlier uh, adaptive controller had, namely uh, the need of inverting the inertia matrix and updating the inverse, uh, or some uh, estimate of the uh, actor robot acceleration, here we are only using the desired acceleration, and uh, in particular has no farther lower bounds except on the PD gains, except the fact that uh, those should be positive and typically are chosen as symmetric. Uh, there are many variants that you can imagine. Uh, for instance, you may have uh, a subset of dynamic coefficient that you consider to be exactly known, maybe because uh, you have identified them a priori and they will uh, not change because of the operative condition, and a subset which instead requires adaptation. And you can slightly modify the proof in order to show that if you adapt only the uh, A hat that needs to be adapted in a sense, uh, and keeping the control law the known part as well, uh, you can uh, obtain the same result. Uh, there are other variations in which you can replace to the unknown, to the known terms, so that there are some uh, dynamic parameters that you can adapt, uh, other that are um, partly known, there's only some uncertainty with bounded values, so you could design a robust controller for that part, uh, if you're uh, interested in it. Uh, finally, the non-adaptive version, as I, as I mentioned, so the one that we started with uh, in the Slotin and Lee um, controller, if you're using their A hat, which are accurate estimates, so you don't need to do adaptation, this is a static trajectory tracking controller, which explores, as I said, the passivity property of the robot dynamics. There are other possible adaptation laws, uh, there are some adaptation law that, uh, in the case of regulation, simplifies, which is not the case of Cosilatin and Lee. At the end of uh, this presentation, you will find uh, some few remarks on uh, uh, another adaptive uh, regulator, uh, which adapts only the gravity term, as you may imagine it is needed. But uh, I will leave you uh, this as uh, your own studies. So um, let's, let us conclude with uh, 
some numerical results on the most simple case that I could think of. So again, we have a pendulum under gravity. Uh, I introduce here a model with friction. Uh, so E theta dot V dot plus MGB sine theta plus F E theta dot is our model. And its linear parameterization is quite simple. There are three dynamic coefficients, exactly those that uh, appear in this single equation. So the regressive matrix is a one by three matrix of this form. And uh, suppose that we uh, don't know exactly the values of this dynamic coefficient. So the viscous friction coefficient, the total inertia of the link around its joint axis, and the product mg0, um, or g if you wish, times d. Uh, so the mass, the distance of the center of mass from the uh, rotation axis uh, times the 9.81 known numbers. But as a whole, this is a dynamic coefficient. So we define, we assign a trajectory, so this pendulum may oscillate or go at constant speed or uh, follow uh, any profile as, as long as it admits uh, uh, a second time derivative. The reference uh, velocity is the velocity, the desired velocity plus lambda, the error, and the lambda is chosen as kp times uh, kd to the minus one, in this case, there's only one degree of freedom, so Kb and Kb are scalar, so uh, this product is Kb over Kb. And the adaptive controller is the following one. So we have a control O which takes the uh, regressor matrix and multiplies this uh, for the estimation of the dynamic coefficient. So we are reproducing the above equation where we put a uh, hat on top of uh, the dynamic coefficient i, the dynamic coefficient mg d, the dynamic coefficient phi b, and then we add a PD controller uh, with the scalar gain kp and kb. And the adaptation takes the following form. Remember, it's uh, uh, gamma times uh, y transpose times the modified velocity error, so the difference between the reference velocity theta dot r and the actual velocity theta dot. So the, uh, these are three states of the dynamic adaptive controller. The gamma is chosen as diagonal, so we have three numbers, gamma 1, gamma 2, and gamma 3. Of course, the uh, larger value will uh, move faster the estimate in response to a uh, neighbor uh, in the reference velocity, but choosing them uh, too large may also amplify some noise. We are assuming that all measurements we are doing are perfect. Instead, we may uh, limit the gammas in presence of uh, relatively large noise in velocity measurement and position measurement. And the, um, the Y transpose is evaluated uh, wherever there are linear terms in velocity and acceleration, they are evaluated with the reference value, so theta dot r and theta double dot r. While the gravity term, which is depending only in a linear fashion, actually is the only nonlinearity in the system on the uh, configuration theta, uh, will be evaluated at the measured value of theta, so using the encoder quantities. Now, suppose... Uh, that we do some, uh, we have a weight numerical, our adaptive control. For doing this, uh, I'm taking as a ground truth value, so real value of the dynamic coefficient, uh, this uh, tribal, so 7.5 for the inertia, 6 for the product of GZ, and 1 for the viscous uh, friction coefficient. And we have some initial estimate, which are 33% of for the inertia, 20% off for the gravity dependent term and 100% uh, off for the dynamic coefficient. And uh, we choose some control parameters. I uh, have made some trial tests to obtain some uh, reasonable results. So but any positive values for Kb and Kb would work, and any positive value for gamma would work as well. Uh, and we uh, I show here 
two types of simulation with two different test trajectories. So the, the pendulum, the tweeted uh, symbol link, uh, starts in the downward configuration, so with theta of time zero, zero, and at rest, so with theta dot equal zero. And in the first uh, simulation, it should follow a trajectory which is uh, minus sine of phi. Now, uh, at the time zero, the desired position is zero, so we are matching position. The desired velocity, theta dot desired at time zero, is uh, indeed minus cosine of t evaluated at time zero, so it's minus one, so we have initially a velocity error for this trajectory. Uh, the uh, second trajectory instead has a bang bang acceleration profile uh, and it's periodic, so it uh, uh, repeats itself. Uh, with uh, an amplitude of one radian per second square and a frequency of one radian per second. Uh, indeed, this profile, uh, which has a discontinuous, a discontinuous acceleration, is more exciting than the first one. The first one has only one frequency. The second one, if you expand the Fourier transform, it has an infinite number of uh, frequency components. Of course, the highest one with very little energy, but indeed it's more exciting than the first one. So, although this concept of the number of frequency components is a linear concept, it could be a guideline also in order to predict if the estimates of the dynamic coefficient will converge to their true values or not, which is an operation that you can test in simulation, indeed, not necessarily in a, a real experiment. Uh, I stress the fact that, in fact, this convergence is not necessary for having convergence of the trajectory error to zero. So let's look at the result for the first trajectory. So uh, minus sine of phi, you can see that the error at time <coughs> zero is zero for the blue lines, the position, while it's equal to one uh, radian per second, for the dashed green line because uh, the, we start at rest while the desired trajectory starts with a minus one of initial velocity. But uh, over time, uh, the error converts to zero. And on the right plots, you see that uh, the, tor the control torque has some initial transient. Of course, initially, there is also a non-zero velocity error which is amplified by the KD gain. Uh, so we have a larger torque, but after some transient, uh, the control becomes periodic as it is periodic, the desired trajectory. There's a big difference, however, the desired trajectory is a pure sinusoid. Here, uh, there's no sinusoidal regime at steady state because the system is nonlinear. So we are uh, moving in a uh, gravity field which changes with the configuration and this gives the non-linearity to the system. So periodicity is recovered, but not periodicity in the sense of a linear system, which would respond in a sinusoidal behavior to sinusoidal inputs. The second uh, trajectory, uh, the more exciting one, the band bang acceleration profile, are periodic. Uh, in this case, the error is zero at the initial time, because uh, we start uh, matched with the uh, uh, downward configuration and with zero velocity uh, uh, as the robot has, uh, you will see some uh, transient behavior for the error and eventually a, a bit uh, longer transient time, the error will go to zero. Uh, the control torque has a strange profile but in fact, the profile is strange only because there are discontinuities. In fact, since we have a bang-bang reference acceleration profile, the acceleration will be discontinuous and as well the torque once we converge to the... Uh, and in fact, also before converging to zero error. So these discontinuities are those of the desired acceleration. Um, the final slide uh, shows the behavior of the dynamic coefficient in the two cases. In particular, I'm showing 
since this is a simulation, I know the true values, so I'm doing plots of the uh, errors with, between the actual true parameters and the estimated one. For the first trajectory, you see that uh, the estimate is changing, but when you have convergence of the position and velocity error to zero, also the estimate converge to constant values. But uh, since these are the error, not all goes to zero. In particular, the estimate of the dynamic uh, of the viscous friction coefficient goes to zero, while the other two estimates remain uh, with an error of about one in specific units. On the other hand, uh, the estimate in the case of the second trajectory, which is the more exciting one, uh, will have some transient, but all of them, all three estimates, will converge uh, to their true value so that the uh, estimation errors converge to zero, showing that this condition, uh, this situation is more favorable for exciting the estimation process. So, with this, we conclude the trajectory tracking control design in the uh, uh, in the joint space uh, and thank you for listening.